So if we talk about Autodesk, a lot of people would, as I said before, <coughs> think automatically AutoCAD. So traditionally, we have, of course, been very strong in the design and also in the building area. Now, what we believe is especially important in the, in the infrastructure uh, BIM concept, so to speak, is before you actually go into the design, that we provide you with a tool where you actually can do the planning. So roll out risks and make sure that you consider all the potential eventualities for a project failure before you go into the actual design phase. So before you invest the resources of the designers who are quite, you know, they have the, they're, 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 they're a, a valuable resource for the company. They're on good salaries, etc. We want to make sure that we, by the time when we engage them to in, into a project, that we use them as a resource wisely. And also, once we have uh, completed an infrastructure project, that we make sure that we have a, a system in place and, of course, a process in place that. Um, that enables you to run and maintain the infrastructure smoothly. Now, by infrastructure, I'm really referring to all sorts of things, such as roads, rail tracks, cables, water pipes, etc. Just to, um, just to, uh, uh, for 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 uh, simplicity reasons, I'm not going to refer to each of these uh, pieces of infrastructure every time. Um, also, you see the record management bit. We used to call that document uh, management, but uh, that was a bit confusing, of course, because people were actually thinking we do a document management solution, which we're not. So we're not talking about the classical email document management here, for example, but really support the whole infrastructure lifecycle from a data point of view. So give you a tool where you can capture those data from the time when you start uh, developing the idea, planning over the design, over the construction, feed that data back in in case you give the, the construction, for example, into the, uh, an external third party company, and feed that information as an inbuilt plan um, back into the system for the maintenance purposes. So, if we have a look on that uh, detailed infrastructure life cycle, those are really the, the, the stages that. Um, a piece of infrastructure has to go through from a data point of view um, th th throughout their life cycle. Now, I am aware that there is most companies out there who don't do all of this themselves. So a lot of companies, for example, would do the planning. Part of the planning, would uh, um, some of them would outsource uh, the detailed planning, for example. Then the detailed design is do often done in-house. Construction is very often outsourced. So the, the dirty part, as they call it, is very often uh, supplied by third-party companies. And then, depending on how, how far to what extent your business goes, the management of the infrastructure is done in-house uh, or, or also outsourced. Now, just at this <coughs> point, to get a little uh, feedback from your point, how many of you would actually outsource the construction? If you could raise the... <laughs> Okay, and the rest, would you be doing the construction in-house or? Yeah, okay, very good. Other parts that we have outsourced? Anybody who outsources the planning, for example? Everything, everything done in-house. <coughs> very good. So, um, if we look, if we, if we break down this life cycle and have a look on the, on the detailed uh, step uh, of the workflow, um, and we, we think why it's important that we execute well and why it's important that we have processes and, of course, software that covers those processes. Um, and if we start with the planning, then the first thing I'm talking to people is creating a basis that you can plan from. Now, that is something that most of the people I'm talking to are struggling with. Because the, the problem is in order to create the basis, to, order to, to execute the planning as as, as, as well as possible and as accurate as possible, you need to bring all that data about a certain site where you want to build on top of. You need to bring all that data together in one pool <coughs> to create that basis. Now, typically, uh, here uh, we're talking about a different kind of data, data types. So we, this could be existing card information. This could be GIS information. This could be surveying information, such as point cloud data, for example, um, that we need to import. 
This could be raster data, so actual paper maps that we scan in, feedback into the system, and um, again, that help us create that uh, current, uh, current situation we can uh, start planning from, but also uh, common GIS uh, format types. So this is just an example. This is an S3 shapefile that we can uh, that we uh, can handle without any problems. But this also could be, for example, information coming from Bentley, uh, Intergraph, etc. The reason why I'm saying this is that, of course, ideally, I would wish that everybody would only use Autodesk software. Now, realistically, I know that is not it, that is it, this is not going to be ever the case. So, hence, what we did with the infrastructure solutions is we have built them on an engine, which is re which is called what we call AutoCAD Map, which is really able to handle all sorts of different file formats, because this is the most one of the certainly most crucial steps in the whole infrastructure process. If you don't have the information available, you cannot plan properly. Even, even though you have the most fancy analysis tools, if you don't have the data available, it's not going to uh, be of any use. <coughs> Just to give you a real life, life example why this is relevant, I'm working with the uh, Central Recovery in Northern Europe. Uh, I'm working with the Swedish municipality who has uh, planned uh, to extend their water network. So they plan to build a new power plant. They have uh, planned the project, they have uh, taken down a little forest in order to make room for the for the, uh, for the plant, etc. And yeah, the, the, the guys designed the whole thing. And uh, just by the time when the guys, when the construction guys went on site, start building the thing, turns out that the forest was protected. So they weren't actually allowed to build on that site. And that is I exactly, it, it sounds, of course, this is a very unusual example. That's why I picked it. It's, uh, it's a little bit funny as I um, not for them, though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what happens in that municipality. The information tree and protected hasn't been linked. As simple as that. Of course, they had the information available somewhere, but that, that is exactly what happened there. And th that's why I'm, uh, why I'm emphasizing this point uh, relatively strong. It's something that happens on a daily basis in all sorts of companies. That the information is available, but the ability to bring it all together, to create that basis or that platform where you can execute the planning on top of, is simply not possible. So once we have managed to put all the information into the same data pool, that is when we can start to analyze the conditions. So once we have all those information available, such as protected trees, or uh, this could be also rainfall data, or flooding data, for example, etc. That's when we can start to analyze. And of course, we also analyze the site itself. So what, what are the conditions on the actual site? Who is living there, for example? What is the existing infrastructure on the site? Hence, very important, the GIS and the uh, CAD integration. Um, again, something that most companies wouldn't really have um, as, as a standard because Historically, the, the GIS, or the planning department, has been relatively isolated uh, to, to the design department. So it's something a lot of our customers are struggling with, bringing those GIS data and design data together for planning purposes. And then, of course, the drafting. So this is just an example to a uh, house connection with uh, for an electricity cable. and. Um, also, what we what we have in the, the vertical solutions compared to the auto uh, to the horizontal AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT <coughs> solutions, we have the so-called classification. So, I, I will have a, a little example later to that. So, if I'm drafting an electricity uh, cable or a connection, the the system allows me to put information behind that. So, whoever works with that draft will know what kind of voltage the cable has what kind of material it is, what kind of age, when it was in put into the ground, what height, etc. Very important. So if we think about the, the whole summary, why is it important to, to execute as well as possible in the planning phase, is really thinking back to the example to do the early error detection. So if we detect errors by the time when we already took down the trees and started digging a hole, that's when it's really getting expensive. So um, really what we're trying to achieve here is that 
rather, rather than waiting until that stage, really uh, worst case to keep the worst case scenario uh, to, to a point where worst case we have wasted a couple of hours of our planner, but nothing more. Now, what we did is just to give you a uh, context to a real life example. Now, uh, we, we learned from MicroCut that there's different industries here today. So we have utility companies, we have uh, local government, we have uh, some transportation. Somebody involved with transportation, is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so what we did is we created little ABIs just to uh, capture a real life workflow. Because we have a mixed industry, we picked an example where we have uh, literally created uh, all, all different examples in one. So we have uh, utilities, we have uh, streets, etc. So the example I've come up with is that, um, uh, uh, that, that we pretend for a moment that we're a little uh, or a bigger AC <coughs> company and we want to do a little bit money. So we have this project of this new housing estate that we're planning to do. And really what, what I did is create the workflow after after each bit of the of the uh, life cycle, um, to give you context to reality. 